Friday on Melrose Mountain in Tryon, North Carolina. 9-11, September the 11th. I remember exactly where I was. I remember exactly what I was doing. As a matter of fact, I'm old enough to remember when JFK was assassinated, exactly what I was doing. Moments in history that uh, just shocked all of us. What can we learn from 9-11? Well, there's one thing I think that, uh, that we should learn, and that is that no one knows for sure how much time they have. You see, 9-11 was not just males, not just females, not just black, not just white, not just from the United States. Many of them were immigrants from other lands that had come to the United States. It was no respecter of persons. There were young people and old people. Even some of the first responders' lives were taken. No one knows for sure how much time they have. Uh, recently, one of the fellows that swims down at the lake with us had a massive heart attack and is no longer with us. He wasn't uh, more than 62 or 63 years old. No one knows how much time they have. Second thing that I think we can learn from 9-11 is that some people have no respect for lives. There are those around the world who hate so deeply uh, that they have no respect for life. They would do anything to gain their objectives. Sad to think that there are those kind of people but every day we pick up the newspaper, watch TV, and we see that people with mental illness take others' lives without any real reason. Just because they're not thinking right. Their minds aren't working as they should. Not as God intended. So two things that we know for certain from 9-11. No one knows for sure how much time. It's no respecter of persons. Some people have no respect for life. And... Therefore, any one of us at any day could wind up as the result of a crime or an accident. The third thing that we ought to learn from 9-11 is you better be ready. You see, I believe, and I believe that the Bible teaches clearly that we have eternal souls. And those eternal souls are going to spend that eternity in one of two places, heaven or hell. And if that's true, and I believe with all of my heart that it is, then we better be ready. As a matter of fact, the Bible teaches that clearly in Matthew 24, verses 42 through 44. Therefore be on alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the household had known the time of the night that the thief was coming, he would have been on alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. For this reason, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at a tower when you do not think he will. No, he's not coming tonight. The end times must be a long way off. Rapture of the church? Certainly not tonight. Well, the Bible says you better be ready. The people that went to work that day in New York City at the Twin Towers, they didn't think there was any chance that they would ever lose their lives in a building made so strong to withstand such winds and possible earthquakes, so many fire protection devices. No one ever thought. As a matter of fact, if you measured the odds, I, I don't know what they would have been, but it would be one in, I imagine, billions that you would be in the exact office building that would be struck by two planes and that fire would melt the metal in such a way that the entire building would come down. What are the chances? No wonder Jesus said, you better be ready. Because he's coming at a time when we think he's not. That's your thought for the day. Be sure to think about the families of those that have been left behind and pray a word of comfort for them. But most of all, pray a word that they might come to know Christ as their Savior 
because they need to be ready just as their families need to be ready.